Hi everyone, this is Tom Ray again, the program coordinator for UNLV Gear Up within UNLV The Center. I'm here today to talk to you about the correlation, which means the relationship between GPA, high test score, and how much money you get for college. Today we're going to look at a few charts. One, we're going to compare universities and see the type of money that you're rewarded if you apply there. So the first chart, we're going to look at Baldwin Wallace University. If you look at this grid, you can see that merit scholarships, merit meaning the amount of work that you put in to earn money because you're merited for your efforts. These scholarships are based solely on your GPA and test scores. If we look at Baldwin Wallace University, we see that if you have under a 3.0, they give you $12,000 for the Yellow Jacket Success Grant. Now, this chart doesn't tell you what the cutoff is, but I'm sure it's probably somewhere between 2.5 and higher because if you have a 1.0 or a 2.0, you know, you might not even get into the college. So uh, it, it just says under 3.0, but it can't be under that much. And remember, if you don't know what 3.0 is, I would encourage you to check our how to read or compare a high school transcript video, because that video will show you how to calculate your GPA and what a GPA even stands for, but we'll briefly touch on it today in, in this video. So again, a 3.0 is a B average, and under a 3.0, you get $12,000. A 3.0 to a 3.34, you get the fellow scholarship, and then higher, you see the deans, trust these and presidents. These are just different names, but it basically is different tier levels of the money that you'll receive. And if you look on the left, the higher your B average is, the more money you'll get on the right. Now let's move on to the next college. If you look at the next slide, we see Central Michigan Scholarship Grid. And in this one, we actually have test scores and GPA. And if you look at it, the SAT ranges from a 970 up to a 1600, and the ACT ranges from an 18 to a 36. And now on the top, you have your 4.0, 3.9 to a 2.9 GPA, and it's on a grid based on your scores on your test, as well as your grade point average. Now, if you see in the legend, the one that's shaded purple dark, very dark, those scholarships pay for 65% of your tuition for four years. So when it says the first year value, that just means how much you're being awarded per Per year. So that's $8,288 per year. And if you're getting your bachelor's degree, that means you're going to college for four years. So you take that, you multiply it by four, and that's how you get your $34,125. If you look at the next one, the orange shaded legend, you see that it pays for 55% of your tuition for four years, and it drops to $7,000. But it also means that your GPA has dropped to some extent, and your test score has dropped to some extent. The better way to read this is you would find your GPA, let's say your GPA is a 3.3, and let's say, since we're in Clark County, let's use your ACT score. Let's say your ACT score is a 23. So if you go to 3.3 and you go down to a 23, we're in the maroon color, which would pay 30% of your tuition for four years. But let's say you improve your test score slightly and you get a 29 instead. That would bump you up into the yellowish looking column, which pays for 35% of your tuition. So that's kind of how you match the grid. You just find your GPA on one axis and then you find your test score on the other axis and you go and meet it in the middle and that tells you what level of money you're going to be awarded. So that's for Central Michigan. Let's move on to another school and we can see what other differences are. So the next slide we're seeing Mississippi College and again they have their own grid but they have an ACT, SAT, and CLT test and then they have their GPA. We can look at Mount Mary and the same thing. The higher the test score, the higher the GPA the more money you get. If you look at Texas Tech School, some of these schools might require you to take a certain amount of credits. So if you look at the renewal requirements on the bottom right, where it says 30 TTU hours, that means that the student would have to have maintained a 3.5 GPA and taken X amount of classes to renew that scholarship. So do look for the requirements to maintain that scholarship because some places you might not get to keep it. And especially if you drop out of college or you don't finish your classes, some universities and even the federal Pell Grant, they might want their money back. So you would owe them money. So make sure that you don't drop out and you continue to get the tutoring that you need and finish your classes. And lastly, let's look at a university that we all know, UNLV. So like all of the other schools, we have our own grants, our own scholarships, and it's based on, again, an ACT, SAT test scores, and GPA. And we see here that we have three different categories, the Provost, the UNLV Excellence Scholarships, and the Rebel Scholarship. That concludes our video on the difference between how a high GPA and high test score can impact how much money you get for college. As always, thank you for sharing your time with me today, and continue on with your education success.